Welcome to another episode. We'll be playing with an amazing new module in the VCV rack family. RGB matrix by Sparkett's stuff. It's an array of 32 by 32 RGB LEDs that can be controlled with voltage, almost like an actual LED screen. So we have an array of 32 by 32 LEDs, which means 1024 in total. On a defined amount of samples, it reads the input values and sets the color for every LED. In case the sample rate is configured at 44,100 per second, every sample lasts one between 44,100, around 22 microseconds. With the samples per pixel knob, we can choose between 1 and 30 samples to process every LED. Less number of samples means a faster refresh rate. The X pulse output sends a pulse on every sample, so for instance, it can be used as a clock to run a sequencer. The Y pulse output sends a pulse every time a line ends. The end of frame output sends a trigger you know when. The X output sends a stepped ramp from 0 to 10 volts, from the beginning, till the end of the line, and then starts over. The Y output also sends a stepped ramp from 0 to 10 volts, this time from the beginning, till the end of the frame, and it increases every time a line ends. Auto-patched to the red and the green input, it gives a nice Rastafarian vibe. Let's talk about this additive color model, where the primary colors are red, green, and blue. How can we get the rest of the colors? We add light every time we add channels, so the colors don't mix the same way as the pencils. Then red and green give yellow. Red and blue give magenta. And green and blue give cyan. And all three colors give white. The Matrix by Doc B is a module that is unintentionally the perfect companion to RGB Matrix. It converts ASCII characters to values and gates, and it works right out of the box, driving the header with the X and Y outputs. The matrix can record the input, so we will use it to see the character corresponding to each voltage. When we connect the X pulse in the trig input, we can see a capital P appears on every pulse. There's no CV connected, so P must be 0 volts. If we increase the voltage, now the letter changes to a capital V. We need 8 different values to get a set of shades. Starting from 0, P, then Q for the darkest shade. Now we are able to convert some ASCII art into lights. First, we need to prepare the images. Then convert them to ASCII and finally paste into the module with some kind of hack. Let's start with the flame emoji. In an image editor, we resize it to 32 by 32 pixels. Then we need to separate the red, green and blue channels. A bit of black background is missing. Now we export them. ASCII Paint is an amazing online tool. We set the canvas to 32 by 32, remember to uncheck the proportion link. Drag and drop the image into the canvas. In the palette editor, we put the characters we get before. Now we save the text for later use. And we repeat the process for the red image. We can't paste the text directly into the matrix, so first, we have to select the module, copy it, and then paste what we got into a text editor. We have to copy and paste the first image between the quotes after the matrix property, and get rid of the line breaks to join the complete image in one only line. Then, select all, come back to VCV and paste it. So we do the same thing for the red image.
now seems like the values are negative. We add Bog Audio's offset module to invert the signal. We set the scale to minus 1 and we level up the green offset. The same for the red channel. And finally, there is the fancy flame emoji made of virtual LEDs. Bog Audio's CVD is a simple delay and we will use it to give the fire that classic movement. Now with LLFO, we connect random pulses to the dry wet input of CVD. We feed the offset input of the green channel with an audio signal. The module PD array can record any sequence. Mini step is to scan the play and record position of the array. We have to increase the number of samples from 10 to 1024. Mini step can't go to 1024 so we put 999 instead. When we click the rec button the sequence is recorded. So we no longer need the original module to play the sequence. We can play with the position input to get interesting effects. RGB matrix comes with another module, color wheel. Instead of having red, green, and blue channels to compose the image, it uses hue, saturation, and value channels. Hue is sort of the tone of the color. Saturation is like its intensity. And value is its brightness. One of the best sequences, not only in VCV Rack but in the world, is I Love Cookies, by Computer Scare. It has as many inputs and knobs as letters in the alphabet, and it can sequence them with text. Here we have a sequence of 16 steps. Lower cases take the values from knobs and upper cases from inputs. The A knob is set to 0 and the B knob is set to 10. 13 times A and 3 times B. Because 16 is half of 32, the sequence paints half of a line, and then it repeats, so we see two bars of three pixels. We add a second channel, with the same sequence but in a different phase. And then a third one for the blue channel. Not that if we don't reset the sequencer with the end of frame output, the bars aren't static and there's a horizontal scan. We can play with the length of the sequences to create different patterns. I Love Cookies has more magic features. Instead of repeating the letters, we can use it to multiply them. We also can put fixed values in numbers between less than and greater than. And if we put several steps between curly brackets, the module will choose one randomly. Amazing! Now we can try ASCII art again. So we get an ASCII image in one line like before, and then we paste it in the text field. In this case, the palette of the ASCII is lowercase at a h, so the gradient is defined by the first knobs. But will I love cookies handle 1024 steps? Oh! Look at that! It's beautiful! The module has six channels, so it could handle the three colors easily. For the second image, the palette is lowercase i to p, so we have a set of the next knobs to define the gradients. But these are fixed values, what if we use CV inputs instead? We convert a radial gradient with a palette of upper cases. And we use Octasource by Erica Synths to make some movement by phased LFOs. There are more techniques to use, like a matrix to mix signals and make different mixes to blend images. Output a phased LFO directly. We could draw on the screen with binary octets, like in the old days. We can pair it with the game of life. or switching channels to animate an elephant. Hope you got some inspiration to add some visuals to your patches. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. If you want to keep this channel alive, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.